If you're currently working IT help desk or support and are looking to transition into a career in the cloud, then this episode is for you. Our guest today was able to successfully make the change from being an IT help desk to becoming a solutions architect at AWS. Here are some key takeaways I want you to listen out for as you listen to this episode. One, how he was able to leverage his IT help desk experience and transition that into cloud skills. Two, how he was able to prepare for his interview so he had the best chance of success. Three, how his roles and responsibilities have changed as he's sort of moved through the cloud industry from a junior to a senior solutions architect. And four, the importance of building your communication skills and how developing this non-technical but essential skill will help you accelerate your cloud career. So if you haven't already, smash that like button if you're excited to get started. Welcome to Cloud Career Mentor. Let's dive right in. Welcome to the show, Costa. How are you doing? Hi, Fiyemi. Doing good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing really good. Thank you. I think, you know, before we get into the cloud and all of that, on LinkedIn, I can see one of your first roles was as a network, well, as a junior network administrator. I'd like to know what you did before that and how you actually got into that network administrator role. Junior network admin, that's, that's been quite a long time ago. So that was actually something that I got into when I was still studying in university. So I was actually studying full time and uh, I'm the type of person that can't sort of sit still in one place and I, I want to sort of just move on and sort of uh, have itchy feet. I wanted to get into the, into the work uh, career and, and experience uh, what, it, what, it was, what it meant. So I kind of paused uni for probably about a year and then kind of got into that and, um, and I liked it. Um, I got to learn a lot more on the job than I would have um, just staying at uni. Not to say don't go to uni, kids, but um, <laughs> definitely um, go out there and, and, and experience it. You'll learn a lot more on the job. Out of curiosity, what, what were you studying at the time? Networking, actually. Yeah. Networking. <laughs> that was the same yeah. deal. Yeah. I think that's great because, you know, one thing I always tell people who want to get into the cloud industry is that your priority should be to get that first job because that's where you're going to learn the most because, you know, when you have real customers, real deadlines, real projects, that, that just accelerates the learning more than any lab or any certification will. So that that's great insight. And, you know, I can see you spent a couple of years building your IT career and eventually you became a system administrator. Do you remember what tasks you were doing as a sysadmin? Because I'm sure those skills became relevant once you transitioned into the cloud industry. Are you interested in getting your first cloud job? If you answered yes, then I have a free guide just for you. This free guide walks you through a proven step-by-step -step process to help you get that first cloud job. It walks you through the three simple steps you can take today to make yourself highly employable. The link is in the description below, so make sure you download it now if you're interested. All right, let's get back to the show. Yeah, so I transitioned quite a bit. I moved around few jobs. I was quite young. I enjoyed traveling a lot. So prioritize travel over career sometimes. And I would actually just go to jobs to make some money so I could go traveling again. So in terms of that particular job, that was really the sort of in-house for a very small business, you know, hands across the whole spectrum of um, technologies, you know, your networking, your sysadmin with Windows, a little bit of Linux, troubleshooting, providing in-house IT support. So that really told me to sort of juggle priorities a little bit well and, and um, get really, you know, into the thick of it with managing on-prem servers and, and the like. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like you had a lot of experience with managing servers, completing projects, and, you know, these are all things that were relevant, I'm sure, um, later on. So I'm curious, what made you decide to go from, you know, system administration on premises? What, what made you decide to go more into the cloud world? Yeah, so prior to um, joining AWS, I actually ended up working for another company that had much more broader sort of technology across the field. Um, they centered roughly, well, predominantly around VMware. So there was a lot of virtualization. And from there, it was kind of just a natural sort of transition. And I didn't really think about cloud at that option at that point too much. It was more of a, just so happened to be that um, my 
girlfriend at the time were look she was looking to move over to um interstate for for another career transition and i was like okay sure let's go let's let's give it a go and i applied at multiple different companies uh interviewed quite a lot and uh, aws just came up knocking on the door and um and i was like yeah sure you know i, I know of aws you know i spun up an ec2 instance like everyone else and um thought you know hey sure i'll, I'll give it a go why not so i really just prepared myself as best as I could, you know, dove deep on the leadership principles. You know, I was really excited. Um, I didn't want to get my hopes up too much, but um, I, I made sure that I covered off my bases, knew my fundamentals well, and um, went through the interview loop. And um, yeah, the rest is sort of history. Yeah. So that leads us nicely into the next question is, what did you actually do to prepare for that interview? You know, did you do any certifications, any courses, any boot camps? How did you prepare yourself? I didn't really do any AWS certs. I had zero AWS certs under my belt. I did have a couple of Cisco certs. So, you know, given that I came from a networking background, I acquired those. But in terms of preparation, it was really, I knew that my technical skills were good. My networking fundamentals were good. A bit of sysadmin work, things like that. So you knew, you know, the basics around Windows, Active Directory, Linux administration, things like that. Um, so I knew the technical side I could cover off well. It was more about the leadership principles, learning about them. Um, and making sure that I was really across those, um, having some good customer stories that I could rely on to make sure that they covered off those particular LPs. And I think that's what really sort of um, set me above the rest of the candidates. Yeah, I think that's so important because you know, a lot of the times people think they need like 10 AWS certifications, they need all these things. But I think what actually really helped you is the fact that you already had a breadth of experience with networking, compute, servers, like a lot of technical skills which you'd got from your previous roles and so all you needed to do was focus on the cultural aspect of things and so this is for anyone looking to get into the cloud you know you might not want to get into aws as a company but i think it just shows that your hands-on experience your projects how you communicate are like really important in terms of transitioning into the cloud. I'm really curious, you know, you've worked, you know, in a more on-premises environment, managing physical servers and all of that. Now you're a solutions architect. What would you say are the differences in responsibilities from your previous sysadmin roles to more of your cloud solution architect roles? Yeah, good question. I did initially apply for an SA role when I, when I went into AWS. It was more for, um, it was part of, I'm trying to remember, it was managed services at AWS. So it was yes. kind of almost like sysadmin work, but but it revolved around utilizing AWS technology. So that kind of pivoted me nicely into AWS, and I figured to myself, well, once I get into AWS, then I can then transition and move laterally within within the wider org, uh, which is mm. what I did. So in terms of the differences, um, look, there's a lot of like you can't discredit the fundamentals that's still always going to be the core you know an ip address is always going to be an ip address you know packets still need to talk to each other and and things like that linux administration is still the same windows administration still pretty much the same so knowing your fundamentals is still going to be the core it's just hosted on a different platform there's you know apis instead of you actually touching the physical servers so apart from that it's pretty much the same not really much difference yeah definitely knowing the fundamentals is important you you touched on something that i think is very crucial so a lot of people if they're looking to transition into the cloud industry you know they haven't really considered the fact that they could actually do it within the organization they're in so let's say they're working in it support for example but there's a cloud department in that organization, I found that that could actually be an easier transition sometimes than try to break into a new organization. So how did you go from sort of managed services and what you were doing before? I believe on LinkedIn, the role was uh, operations engineer. Mm -hmm. How did you right. go from that to solutions architect? First thing is um, apply. So half the battle is always showing up, right? So. Um... Apply for it. Um, I gave it a go, just like I did with AWS. And, and prepare yourself. you got to prepare yourself. So did research. What does an SA really do, right? And I'm sure your viewers can watch your videos. I'm sure you've got videos on, on what an SA does. I'm not going to regurgitate it here again. So, yeah, learn the role, understand it, and maybe even speak to some other SAs within the org. That's one benefit you get once you're in the organization. You can actually reach out to other peers and colleagues and ask them, hey, what do you do? 
because I did actually ask a few peers on, on some other roles that I was applying for. It was revolving around the global network infrastructure team. So I wanted to maybe perhaps try that out. It wasn't really something I was interested in at the time. The SA role sort of appealed to me and, and I do actually have a knack for talking to customers and talking to people. Um, so that's actually one of the main sort of jobs that you really do as an SA. It's not so much hands-on keyboards, it's more people solving problem really so um yeah. yeah no i think that's great because one of the things i recommend as well with people looking to transition within an organization is exactly what you said you know talk to the essays already in there find out what they do and also if you're working on things share that with them like oh yeah I've, i worked on this design i'd love to get your input that way they can see that you're interested and so when an opportunity comes up they know they can reach out to you or you're your top of mind for them so yeah i think definitely talking to people already doing that job is so important and you've also touched on another cloud career mentor bingo here which is communication right because a lot of people they focus so much on the technical side of things you know they, they want to be as technical as possible and they really neglect the fact that you know you know, solutions architect, or even the cloud industry as a whole is a team sport. You know, you, you want to be able to communicate with other stakeholders like, you know, product owners, developers, CTOs, all these people to, to sort of gather the requirements and produce an architecture that's right for that business. And even maybe even persuading them sometimes if they can't see your vision or taking feedback on board and redesigning your architecture. So I think that's so important to highlight that, the fact that communication is so important in this industry. Making sure that you're across, if you can be across multiple sort of um, teams within AWS, I don't know if your viewers know, but you know, one of the unique things about Amazon is we have these two pizza teams. That's the sort of the core concept where you know your teams will be siloed off into sort of individual responsibilities regarding services and in a, in a sort of um, development products and whatnot. So, you know, every time you reach out to someone, that's, you know, you establishing some kind of communique with that individual or that team. So, you know, getting your reputation out is also, it's a people game as well, right? So, and, and it's always going to, you know, work to your advantage down the track whenever you try to sort of, you know, maybe move ahead in your career. And it is something that AWS promotes for all of their employees. You know, they want you to sort of, experience other roles and things like that whenever you get a chance and it is something that's um that's promoted no that's i think that that's really important so you know everyone always talks about the positives and all of that of the cloud industry but i'm really curious what do you find is a challenge with working in the cloud industry it could be as a whole or in aws however you choose to answer that i guess the challenge would probably be oh, i'll start with the benefit the benefit is you're really always um, at the bleeding edge, fast paced, you're at the bleeding edge, you're always learning about new things. Um, whenever they, as soon as they come up, you're probably the first one to know and first one to actually even try it out. The challenge would be that it's fast paced and it's at the bleeding edge. So <laughs> you have to keep up with AWS, there's over 200 services. I don't know all of them. So that I'll be the first one to admit that, right? And, and I think it's an impossible task for everyone to know everything, right? So try and focus once again, you know, always try and break a big problem into small tasks. You know, knowing the fundamentals, the core services, you know, your compute, storage, networking, um, and then you kind of build on from there. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's almost a double-edged sword where it's really fun and exciting to learn new things, but also it can be quite intense where like you feel like you're on this constant learning hamster wheel and, you know, you never really feel confident. But luckily, most companies only use like the same 10 or 15 services. So even though there's over 200 services, the reality is most times you're, you know, you're using the same services in new ways because every context is different, but, mm -hmm. you know, people should, don't feel the need to learn like all 200. You kind of learn as you need to. So I, I think that that's really, really helpful. Um, no, thank you so much. You've shared a lot of really valuable insight here. What advice would you give to someone looking to get their first cloud role? Or maybe, you know, it could be multiple pieces of advice. You know, what have you noticed? What do you think would help help people? Practice interviewing. That's one really crucial advice, regardless of where you apply for cloud or on-prem or whatever, whatever the role is. Practice interviewing. And don't, and I, I don't mean just mean practice, but actually apply for interviews. And don't be afraid to fail because I have 
failed so many times, trust me. It helps you because whenever somebody asks you, you know, tell me about yourself or tell me what you do and tell me why you're applying for this role, you, you kind of know those questions off the back of your hand, right? You could really regurgitate them, have them sort of like as a as a second instinct, right? It's, it's just instinctive for you to, to answer those questions. From a technical point of view, once again, know your fundamentals. Don't, don't skimp on those because some simple question like, how what happens when you enter a website into a into a url what happens then right like something so simple like that you could answer that in a million different ways so yeah know your fundamentals and yeah don't be afraid to just have a crack yeah and i, I really want to highlight that practice your interview thing because i mentor you know a lot of people looking to get into the cloud industry and sometimes i do like a mock interview session with them i'm like okay you know you see you've done all these things Let, let's have a mock interview and see how it goes and, you know, I ask a simple question, like, you know, tell me about yourself and, you know, they don't know how to answer that. Or, you know, tell me about some of the cloud projects you've done and they can't speak confidently. And that made me realize that actually you could be the most technical person in the world. You could be the most, you know, smartest person, but if you can't communicate your experience, if you can't speak confidently, nine times out of 10, an employer is going to hire someone who can speak confidently about what they've done, even if they might be less technical than another candidate. But, you know, the employer doesn't know. So at the end of the day, you have to show them, you have to be confident. So I think that is really important. And for the listeners here, on YouTube, if you want to know what kind of questions could you get asked, I have a YouTube video type titled, you know, cloud interview preparation or something like that, where I go through some of the common questions, you know, like what you're saying, tell me about yourself, tell me your projects you've done, you know, tell me about your previous experiences, that kind of thing. So that's a good resource you, you can check out there if you need as well. Thank you very much, Costa, for coming on and sharing your knowledge. If someone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way? Are you a LinkedIn person? LinkedIn is my sort of thing. I don't really do Facebook or anything else. So yeah, if you feel the need to reach out, you're more than welcome to. And whether it's cloud, AWS, if you need some advice, happy to help out. So I think you'll maybe share it in the description or yeah, wherever. Yeah, I'll pop so it in the fine. description. Yeah. And I have yeah, to say, Costa, so you're... You're our first Australian guest, so, <laughs> well, so <there> yeah. <laughs> Happy to it's represent. Been, <laughs> it's been really great to have you. Thanks a Thank lot. You once and again. We'll speak soon.